Hey, I'm Kaz Bracey for Tuts Plus, and in this video, we're going to be checking out some of the awesome tools that Firefox has in its collection of developer tools. Even if Chrome is your primary development browser, Firefox has some tools that Chrome doesn't. The reverse is also true, Chrome has some tools that Firefox doesn't, but the tools that Firefox has are so helpful that you really, really will benefit from knowing that they're there. So about a year ago, Firefox actually set up a dedicated team to start working on adding in web development specific tools into the browser. And they've been creating a whole bunch of really awesome new stuff. And we're gonna check out some of those tools in this video. We'll also be highlighting some tools that were already there that have been there for a while that are just particularly useful. So I'm gonna start by showing you just a couple of introductory things about the editor that it has going for it. So you can hit F12 to open it up. And one of the things that it has is this three pane system. So you've got all of the HTML of the page here, all of the rules, the CSS rules down here, and then you've got a bunch of extra things down here, like the ability to check out the grid, the box model layout, a whole bunch of other stuff here that we're gonna go into a little bit deeper. Up the top here, if you wanna dock the tools in a different position, then you can choose to dock it to the bottom or wherever you need to. As with Chrome, you have the ability to hit a little mobile icon. So you can preview how the site is gonna look at all different device sizes. And one of the cool things that you can do in this view that I like is if you hit this little gear icon up here, you can choose to left align the viewport. So if you are working with a right side docked inspector, then it just makes it a little bit easier to drag and adjust the size of the viewport that you're inspecting. So that's just one little thing that's pretty cool. I'm just gonna dock this back down at the bottom for now. Cause I also wanted to show you as we go through a couple of these tools, you might not instantly see the tools in your Firefox dev tools by default. If that's the case, what you wanna do is hit these little three dots here, go into settings, and then you'll get a bunch of different checkboxes for all the different tools that you may or may not want to use when you're developing. So once you know that's there, then you can go in and you can tinker around and see which tools you want to use. All right, so first up, we're gonna take a look at a couple of the different kinds of inspectors that Firefox dev tools includes. You have your normal inspectors where you can look at HTML and look at CSS, but it has a couple of extras that can be really, really handy. One of those is fairly new and that's the ability to inspect variable fonts. You can also use this to inspect regular fonts as well. Now, let me show you it in action. So F12 again, just drag this down so you can actually see. And I'm going to choose the element picker and then select this text here. This is a variable font, meaning that it has more than just the normal parameters that a font has. It has a whole bunch of additional parameters that you can see down the side here. So like the optical size, for example. Now over on the right here, if I go into the fonts tab, then I have a whole bunch of sliders that I can use to tweak all of the variable font settings for this font. So we've got the more typical ones like font weight, but then we've also got things like optical size. So this helps you to manage readability at different font sizes. And then all of these different custom font parameters that the font creator has put together. So as far as I know at the moment, this is the only browser that allows you to get in and tweak the variable font settings of a given font. And then you also have the more typical font settings as well, line height, font size, whether something is italicized or not. So that is incredibly helpful. And as we start to see variable fonts used more and more, it's going to be even more useful. All right, next up, Firefox DevTools also have a Flexbox inspector. So right now I have this little heading section here selected in my inspector. And we can see here that the display is set to type flex and there's a little grid looking icon or a little figure eight looking icon here. If I click that, then it shows me the layout that Flexbox is working with in this area. And in the layout tab over here, we can see a list of each of the flex items. We can toggle on and off that overlay that helps us visualize our Flexbox layout. And if we jump into these properties over here, and we start making modifications, then the overlay that shows us what's going on with our Flexbox will update in real time along with it. 
And to help you keep control of what's going on in your page, you can also modify the colors of the overlays to anything that you want. So that visualization is gonna be really helpful when you're trying to use Flexbox to get things to line up where you want them to be. In the same way that Firefox has a Flexbox inspection tool, it also has a CSS grid inspection tool. So when you look through my code over here, you can see that a little word flex actually pops up whenever Flexbox is used, but you can also see that the word grid pops up when a grid is used. So if we select this element here, down the bottom in the rules area, you can see there's this tiny little grid icon here. And if I click on that, then it turns on a similar overlay to what we had with Flexbox. So it shows us the rows and the columns, and it also shows us the grid gap in between the rows and columns. In the same way that we could change up the color of the overlay with Flexbox, we can do the same thing with the grid. You can change that to anything that works for whatever your needs are on a particular project. You can also toggle these grid display settings down here. So you can turn on numbers so that you know what the names of the lines are in your grid. If you have named areas as well, then you'll be able to see the names of each area. And if you want to have a grid extend all the way across your whole site so you can see how everything lines up, then you can turn on this setting to extend lines indefinitely to make sure that everything else is lining up with the grid that you're using. We also have a visualization of the grid down here. So you can hover over each of the grid cells to see where they're showing up in your site layout. Another really cool thing that this inspector does is it lets you expand any shorthand properties. So here I've used grid gap, the shorthand, and you can see there's this little arrow. And if I click that, it expands and shows me that this shorthand actually represents row gap and column gap. So if you're not quite sure exactly what's controlling which part of your grid layout, that can help you to make sense of it all. The next type of inspector that we're gonna take a quick look at is the accessibility inspector. Chrome has its own accessibility inspection tools and they're really good. And Firefoxes are a little different and they just offer you some additional benefits. So to use the accessibility inspector, you want to go to this tab on the right here and then turn on the accessibility features. And Firefox recommends that you turn these off when you're done making whatever assessments you need to make on your accessibility setup because otherwise it can be a bit of a drain on performance. So we're going to turn those on and then you can see that it's showing us a tree or an accessibility map of the entire website. And if we expand, we can go through each one of the elements that makes up this entire site. So we can drill down into any of these various parts of the site and we can see all the information that we need over here on the left and as well as properties on the right to help us make sure that our markup is correct, that we're using YARIA roles correctly, that we have fallback content available for things like images and that everything is optimized. You can also Grab this little tool here, which works just like the element picker does in the regular inspector. But if we choose this tool and then we hover over different elements, then it's going to give us a little tool tip with some information specific to accessibility. So here, for example, we can see the color contrast between this foreground text color and the background color. And it shows us that it has a triple A rating. And if we go further down here and we hover over this image, then we can see here that alt text has been put in on this image. It shows us tree control, a list of, etc., etc., etc. So we know that that fallback code has been added in there correctly. All right, so those were the four inspectors that come with Firefox DevTools that have some unique attributes to Firefox. Now I want to show you some of the cool tools that are inside the DevTools. The first one is really awesome and it's a shape editing tool. So what I have here is an image that's using the clip path CSS property to clip off a shape of that image and only show that clipped shape. So if I grab my little arrow tool and select this image, and then we look down here in the CSS rules, you can see that I have this property here, clip path, and then we're using polygon to determine how that path is clipping out the image. And you'll notice that there's a little shape here representing a polygon. Now if I click on that, then Firefox is gonna show me all of the points that make up this polygon. I can click and drag any of those points. I can double click on a line to add a new point. And then I can move that point around. And conversely, if I double click on an existing point, it will delete it. 
So if you look at the code down here, you can imagine that trying to write out these polygons by hand and get them in the position that you want them to be, that's gonna be pretty painful. So this gives you a visual hands-on way to get polygons set up the way that you need them to be for clipping paths. This shape editing tool can also be used with the shape outside property. So on this element, I've got the same image. It has a clip path applied to it as well. That's this shape here. But then it also has the shape outside property applied to it, which is this shape here, which is allowing me to create a buffer zone around this shape. And then this text here has to flow around that shape. So the image is floated to the left and then the text is set to just go around this shape. So in the same way, I can adjust this shape and the text is gonna to have to flow around that shape. It's actually independent of the clipping path that I'm using for the image. So basically what you would do is set up the image with the clipping the way that you want it, or put in a round image or anything else that you need to put in. Then add in your shape outside polygon. What I've done here is I just copied this shape into this line here, and then just adjusted these points over on the right side to give a nice amount of space between the image and the text. As you can imagine, there's all kinds of cool effects that you'll be able to create with that. You're not kept in that rigid column shape that we've pretty much been working with for a long, long time in web design. So this type of thing is gonna help us to make our designs a lot more interesting. The next tool in DevTools that I wanna show you is the CSS Filters Editor. I'm using the same image here again, but I have a grayscale filter applied to it with a level of 50%. So I've taken the color down halfway to black and white. If I click this little icon here, then it opens up the filter editor. And now I can hit these up arrows to increase how much I'm applying the grayscale filter, or I can type in an amount directly. So if I go to 100%, then it's completely grayscale. I'm just gonna take that back to 50 for now so you can see the other effects. And without having to get back into your code, you can add more filters. So for example, if I add hue rotate, then I can start putting degree amounts in here. So let's say 50 degrees, and you can see how it's modified the hues that are used in the image here. And you can add as many different filters as you want. Let me just get rid of, I'll actually get rid of both of those for now, and I'll put in a sepia, for example. So now I've completely sepia toned that image. This gives you a really visual way of getting in and either adding new filters or tweaking the ones that you've got until they're exactly what you want them to look like. Now another really cool feature that this has in here is presets. So let's actually say, I'm just gonna reduce this sepia to 80%, so it's not full sepia. And I'm gonna hit this little button here and that is gonna open up the presets window for me. Now I can give this filter a name or this collection of filters. If you had multiple filters, let's call it sepia 80 and I'll press the little plus symbol. So now that's stored there. So let's say we were just starting out with a new image. We had no filters applied. Click this and it immediately applies that 80% sepia filter for me. So again, massive time saver, hugely useful. Another ability that Firefox DevTools has that I haven't seen elsewhere is the ability to easily view a background image. So I'm just using that same image again here, tiling in the background. You can see background image over here in our CSS rules. If I hover over the URL of that background image then I'm gonna get a little preview. And then if I click on it, then I can see that background image in its own little tab by itself and I can check and make sure that the correct version of the image that I'm trying to use in the background is loaded in, that it's coming at the correct size and anything else that I might need to check out. The next thing that I wanna show you is the ability that Firefox has to visualize transforms, CSS transforms. So on this little image here, I have a rotation applied. So I'm just going to select this image. You can see the transform that I have here. Now if I hover over the property, rotate here, then it shows me where the original position of the element was with a dotted line expressing how the image was modified to get it into its current position. So however many transforms you have, you can just hover over the property in question to see exactly what that transform is doing to your element. And there's one more tool that I wanna show you in this part of DevTools, and that is that you also have the ability to reposition any absolutely positioned elements. 
So this little image is absolutely positioned at the bottom and left of this page. And if we look on the layout tab here in the box model section, you can see that it's flagged this as being absolutely positioned. Now, if I click this little icon, then you can see it brings up these tools. There's a little circle here and a little circle here, and these are actually grab handles. So if I hover over there, you'll see my mouse cursor change. And now if I drag, I can move this image around and you'll see the positioning is updating in this inline element CSS here. So you can adjust the position of your element to just where you need it to be. Then you can copy that positioning code into your original code and use that visual method to help you aligning things to wherever you need them to be. Now I just want to show you through a couple of extra handy little helpers, not full blown tools, but definitely helpful little extras. The first one is the inbuilt color eyedropper. So on the inspection panel here, you can see that there's this little color dropper icon and you can click that to grab a color from anywhere in the page. It's got this really excellent magnification to help you select color from the exact pixel that you mean to. And when you select, that color code is copied into your cache and then you can drop that into your code wherever you need to use it. Next up is the screenshot tool. You won't see this by default. So what you need to do is go into the settings and then in the available toolbox buttons, you can turn on, take a screenshot of the entire page. And then you'll see that this little icon here has appeared. The screenshot behavior settings are here. I personally like to screenshot to a clipboard, then I can paste the image that I've taken into whatever image editor I'm using at the time. So all you have to do is click that button. You'll see the little flash. And if you have your sound going, then you'll hear a little camera shutter sound as well. And that will have taken an image of the entire site. So it's a really great way to grab a screenshot of the whole design that you're working on. We also have in the toolbox buttons here, the ability to toggle on rulers for the page and the ability to measure a portion of the page. So that's added these two icons here. So if we hit this button, then we get rulers across the top and the side of the page. Really great for helping us to make sure everything is sized and aligned as we intend it to be. And then we also have this tool here, which allows us to measure a portion of the page. So we click it and then we can drag out a selection and we'll be showing information on the height, the width and the angle of that selection. So that covers some of Firefox's most useful dev tools for web design. In particular, the inspectors for variable fonts and regular fonts, CSS, Grid and Flexbox are incredibly helpful. And the Firefox dev team is working on new tools all the time. If you want to keep up with what they're doing, they post about what's happening in dev tools on the Firefox dev tools Twitter, which is at Firefox dev tools. There's also a discourse forum that you can participate in and talk with the community about things that are happening in dev tools. And being a community based open source project, you also have the option to get involved yourself and contribute and influence how dev tools progress in the future. And if you're interested in doing that, you can go to firefox-dev.tools. So I hope you've seen some cool tools and little features that are going to help you out with your website development. Thanks very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.